My topic today will be shipping of liquefaction bulk cargoes. Lesson learned from the previous real life incident cases. I'll roughly cover four, four main subjects, introductions and some lesson learned from liquefaction cases. And how can we gather this information and apply to have some safety and loss prevention and ultimately some conclusion to be drawn. Okay, I'll just start with this picture and what can we learn from this picture. In, in general, in the bulk cargo shipping industry, there are two types of cargo instability that have been identified so far, and that is cargo liquefactions. And the second one is cargo instability due to dynamic separations. And we have two, it's not, it's not too much. But these two problems has caused a lot of safety issue to the seafarer and also the ship that's carrying the cargo. And what is actually cargo liquefactions? If we have a pile of earthy kind of cargo that load on board a ship, same like this, Same like the one on my uh, right hand side. We have a pile of cargo. And if you look into that circle that's round on the right hand side, you can see that the cargo itself can look apparently dry, apparently dry. And they will have moisture, in fact, and also airspace between the cargo particle. And this particle itself have actually some frictional contact between each other. But when a vessel went into a sea with such a cargo, they will encounter motion at sea, and at, at sailing time, this cargo will go through a process of settlements, compactions, and when they compact, they will release the air in between the cargo space or in between the pore area. And this pore area, when they are being compacted, the water between the pore spaces, pressure will increase, and this will actually take away the frictional contact between the particles. And when the particle friction contact is being irritated, then the cargo become a problem because at this time, the cargo has lost its shear strength. And when the cargo loses its shear strength, it's just like the cargo has become something like ice cream, it melt down. So what it will happen is that now this cargo has flattened and it can behave like a viscous fluid. And when it behaves, like a viscose fluid. In fact, cargo liquefaction has occurred in your cargo hole. And if cargo liquefaction occur, and what could happen? Because in the dynamic sea itself, you might not be able to have your vessel sailing upright. And if your vessel is not sailing upright, it's dangerous, especially in a very bad weather conditions. I will, I will skip this one, but I'll just try to go to the next phenomenon, which is the uh, cargo instability due to dynamic separations. I'll write up something, but okay, I'll try, try to explain by the next photograph. Okay, if you look at this slide again, you might ask me, you know, why are you showing the same slide again? But this, in 2017, um, Boxsites, uh, Global Boxsites Working Group have defined the second phenomenon about cargo instability, and that is dynamic separations. In this photograph itself, in fact, the whole process is pretty similar, but they have one distinctive differences, is that for cargo separation to be dynamic, dynamically to be separated to happen, you need to have a lot of fine particle to be loaded into your cargo hole. And if you look at the process itself, it's pretty similar as what cargo liquefactions they will went through the same amount of process like compaction, resettlements of cargo material and particles. If you look here on, your, on my right hand side, on the circles that I have drawn, the material itself was same, will have pore spaces filled up with air and water or moisture. And when you went to the sea with a sailing, then these spaces itself was going to be compacted and resettled, and the air will be expelled off during the resettlement process. And what will happen is that the water will be compressed and pressure will increase. At this time, for these cases itself, 
the moisture might not reach the, the frictional strength of the particles and water might migrate above the cargo surfaces and form a pool of water above the cargo. And if you look on the left-hand side of the circle itself, I have drawn the cargo have flattened and water have actually surfaced, migrate above the cargo surfaces. And when you have this scenario happening, in fact, dynamic separation has occurred. And why, when this process has occurred and cargo become unstable, because in, during the sea motions, the cargo itself can be eroded by the process of this free surface above the cargo. And at the same time, the erosion process can slam the cargo and causing the cargo surface layer to be weakened and flow together with the water and forming a slurry pool in the cargo hole. So now, why we, we have some basic idea about cargo liquefactions and also cargo instability due to dynamic separations and why our shipping of liquefiable cargo can be dangerous. The main thing that it can be dangerous is because that when you ship with cargo that can be liquefied, then once it's liquefied, it's become unstable. And when cargo is unstable in vessel sailing in the ship with motion at sea, it can cause the unstable cargo to shift and flow towards the side of the cargo hole, which is partially filled, and cause the ship to be unstable. And cumulative, cumulatively, the ship could develop a threatened lease. And in a very unfortunate cases, the ship could capsize, and it could cause loss of life, at the same time, loss of property, and also the cargo. And what would be the different consequences between cargo liquefactions or dynamic separation, the consequences could be the same. You will not have a ship staying upright in bad weather conditions. The ship will go on a slant. So this is important. To maintain a ship upright, we have to avoid these two conditions happening at sea. So I will try to say something about uh, the Intercargo Bulk Carrier Casualty Report in 2017. If you look at this particular statistics, we can see that cargo liquefactions has caused loss of life over the 10-year period between 2007, 2008 to 2017 for loss of 53 vessels and 202 lives was lost in total for all kinds of incidents. But cargo liquefaction has resulted to 50% of the total incidents. And if you look into 2017 alone, two vessel is lost and 32 life has lost in the bulk carrier industry, but 10 life has lost in the result of suspected cargo liquefaction cases. And that vessel is actually Emirates Star. So now we, I will try to um, go through some of the incidents that has happened before. Okay, I will try to define the size of uh, class size of bulk carrier presently being uh, noted by UNTEX, uh, United Nations Conference on Trades and Development. According to that, right, um, handy, handy sized vessel are actually anything that less than 40,000. And uh, um, sorry, handy size is anything that less than 40,000. And handy max size bulk carriers is anything between 40 to 65, and Panama max is between 65 to hundreds and capsize is hundred thousand ton dead weight and above. And in the intercargo uh, report itself, we can see that in fact we have nine vessels of uh, between 2007 to 2008 to 2017 documented and all these are uh, liquefaction incident cases and we have like Asian Forest, um, Black Rose, Chen Fu Star, Nasco Diamond, Hongwei, and uh, also Vina Lines Queen, Harita Bauxite, Trans Summers, and Bout Jupiter. And of course, the recent uh, suspected case that is not documented is Emirates Star. Out of these nine, in fact, we only have six which have an uh, in investigation report. 
she's coming close, so I have to go a bit faster. <laughs> okay, I will start with these cases and try to identify what is the common, common uh, gathering or information we can find out from, from these cases. Okay, from Chen Fu Star itself, right, we can see that, okay, she is a Handymax bulk carrier and she's carrying nickel ore. And 13 lives have been lost due to the incidents. And Nesco Diamond are also a Handymax bulk carrier carrying nickel ore products. And 22 lives was lost. Hongwei was also a Handymax bulk carrier carrying nickel ore products. And 10 lives was lost. And this is, I'll continue with what they have done Okay, during the time, right, of the incident, we can see that um, Chen Fu Star, right, itself, what they have done for a countermeasure is that the vessels start to lease very slightly, and uh, ballast, tank, uh, ballast tank port side was pumped out and uh, filled up to four or five ballast tank. Change of usage of fuel tank and fresh water tank to the port side. And this is a countermeasure they have done, but was not effective. And ultimately, the vessel sunk. And the weather condition that they have encountered, in fact, was like Beaufort 7 and Beaufort 8. And the location that they have sound is in Taiwan, and the street of Taiwan, just above like Philippine area. And, and if you look at Nesco Diamond itself, okay, three out of five holes was identified to be liquefied. They tried to change the course of heading to reduce rolling, pump out beach water, pumping out free surface water and slurry water from the, from the liquefied hole, but that was not successful and not effective. And the, count, the weather that they have encountered is also at Beaufort 6 and 7. And they also have sung somewhere very close to that location, also in Taiwan area, between the Philippine Sea. And if we were to identify Hongwei, Hongwei also started with a very small lease, angle of lease, and they tried to pump ballast water onto the topside tank, but it was also not effective. And they have also sung somewhere in the south of Taiwan Island. And then if we look, look into Harita Bauxite, are also carrying nickel ore, 15 life have perished, Transamel, nickel ore products, no life have per perished. And then the about Jupiter, which you have like uh, 18 out of 19 life was perished in the incidents. And during the case, right, of Harita Bauxite, we can see that the chief officers indeed do some can tests on site to verify the acceptance of the cargo. And, but during the voyage at sea, right, it happened that the cargo liquefied and the vessel sunk. And the weather that she sunk was at Beaufort 8, also 12 miles west, um, 12 miles off Luzon, which is also very close to the Taiwan side. Trans Summer was also having a slight port side lease and ballast number three top side tank, but she also caught in the weather of Beaufort tent, and she was actually sung, in fact, at a refuge area in, the, in China, Da Wan Shan. Bao Jupiter also had the same problems, and what she encountered was also Beaufort 7, and she sung south of Vietnam. Okay, what can we learn from these particular cases that we have gathered? We can actually quite apparently learned that and understood the general relationship. Normally for liquefaction cases to start, the, car the cargo moisture level should be high and she will encounter bad weather conditions. And normally it start with a small angle of lease and it aggravated into an anger that is uncontrollable. And countermeasure could be very less effective during the time of liquefaction. And the general relationship we can say is that instability or liquefiable cargo have a general functional relationship of moisture content and sea conditions. Cargo shifts are also having the same functional relationship of sea condition and unstable cargo. Capsizing of vessel has a general functional relationship of cargo shift and sea conditions. And from this particular relationship itself, we can tell or we can roughly guess that sea condition is one of a very important criteria to prevent your vessel from sinking. So how can we apply this knowledge that we have acquired in loss and uh, loss prevention? Um, 
okay, we can, we can do to make sure that the cargo moisture level is actually below its TML level or its transport, transportable moisture limit levels. And we, can, we, can, we should make sure this by testing it by a competent laboratory. And cargo loaded on board should be trimmed with grabs to prevent cargo sliding. And alternate loading of cargo, alternate loading arrangement of cargo has better stability. We should always apply alternate loading if it's possible, if the strength of the cargo hold allows. Stability and strength check should be always the paramount thing to do before sea voyage. Professional and reliable weather forecast or weather avoidance measure should be in place. Sufficient place of shelter or should be defined before a voyage for a ship loaded with liquefiable cargo. Rolling motion is one of the very detrimental motions at sea. So at all time, the vessel should be avoid encountering rolling motion. And if rolling motion is too excessive, the vessels should be advised to change course. Be watchful of the voyage and monitor the cargo conditions because uh, be and ship motion behavior regularly. If free water pool develops, and it should be pumped out and proceed to a shelter area when the voyage weather deteriorate. And what can we do after we have do all this? We have to make sure that life-saving appliances are functional and put on when the time that you're needed. So I'm gonna finish up. You're coming very close already. <laughs> okay, so what can, we, what can we learn from all this? In general itself is that, okay, cargo instability is a two parameter problems. First is trans transportable moisture limits. And the second will be the voyage weather conditions. So therefore, before a quantitative understanding of functional relationship between the main parameter responsible for cargo instability due to motion, due to moisture, cargo shifting, and capsizing of ship is defined. Rough weather avoidance or weather routing is suggested to be included as another preventive measure to lower the risk in transporting liquefiable cargo at sea. So I come to the end. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs>